And, and one more thing before we leave the subject. I, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to say this. Yes, I brought it out of him. <laughs> Anyone who comes up to me and says that they want to chase a pro card is talking to someone who plays second at 10 pro qualifiers <laughs> and did 13 nationals and four North Americans. They have no fucking idea what the th- what the term chase pro card even <laughs> is in their wildest imaginations. Could they put together that concept from where they are at the point they make that statement? Hey, everybody. Welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding, episode 76. My friend Dusty Hanshaw and myself, Big Ron Parlo. Got a show for you today. Tons of Instagram questions. We're going to have a few laughs on It's Just Bodybuilding. Hey, Dusty. It's a good word, man. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I I might have to build a second bike just so I can sell it. Well, that's fun. Because I'm collecting parts by accident. How does that happen? Yeah, well, because, you know, I built the bike. Right. And then after I rode for, like, like the first, like, six weeks, my shoulders were kind of bothering me, and I was on some forums, and some of the guys were like, I think you need taller bars, man. You're a big guy. Right. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I should get taller bars. So I like got a, a taller set of bars or like an inch and a half taller, you know, right. like just higher and a yeah. little wider. I'm like, OK, fuck, that's awesome there. And then the end of my bar was like hitting my seat. So I'm like, oh, now I need a layback seat post. So that's I got a layback like seat this. post. Just a little bit. I just got like a one inch, just a subtle one inch drop back at the top. Right. right. Just to move my seat, open the bike up a bit. And then, of course, because I put taller bars on, I had to get a new gyro cable because mine was too short. So now I got an extra gyro cable, extra set of bars. I got an extra set of pedals. I got an extra set of pegs. I got an extra seat post. <laughs> so you need a frame. So I need a frame. And I, got, and I got an extra set of wheels with tires. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Because I got that. my custom wheels built, right? They took like three months to get custom wheels built because mm-hmm. it was so short on parts. So, what, yeah. What, what so, is custom about your wheels? Explain this to me. Well, I had them built. Like I picked the rim, picked the hub, picked the spokes, Picked the tires, had them built, and sent to me. How you much know, did this cost? That was like thousand dollars US. Holy shit balls! I got like the best fucking wheels. I got like top end, like plus it's hard to find chrome rims at the time, and I wanted chrome rims. Right. And there was like every, sold out because of COVID. So I managed to find a set of chrome rims, and then I found the hub I wanted. It was in Germany, so I had it mailed to me, and then I sent it to the guy, and he built it into my wheels. <laughs> Just do a little shopping in uh, Germany Dusty, today. Dusty, that's, you, you know you do the same thing, right? I think the key is, above all else, though, is the fact that you've got, you know, just patiently waiting. Now, now, when you got your new wheel or your new handlebars and everything, did you have to relearn your tricks or was it easier? No, no, it actually, a couple of things, I was like, oh, fuck. Okay, good. Okay. Like, and my shoulders weren't bothering me afterwards, so it was like, that was the, that was the main problem, right? It was just, it was awkward. Are you known as the meathead that does bicycling on these forums? I mean, how did, have they already figured you out? Some giant so they, dude? Yeah, there's a couple guys that are kind of like, you know, they're like, maybe they'll search you or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and then, and then people start sending me like, there's actually a bunch of like meatheads that, that ride. There's right. a couple of guys I found on Instagram like this. There's this one guy, like, you know, he deadlifts 600 pounds, benches four plates for reps. And he, he rides like park and street. Right. And he's like 240 pounds with covered in tattoos. And he does ah. like he does like 360s off picnic tables over fences, bunny hops, cars like he he doesn't do any flatland, but he, he can like manual like back wheel like coast forever all around the skate park and drop down in the pool and pull a 360 out of the pool and stuff. He, do, he rides like that. <laughs> crazy. And then there's a guy um, who's like an old school flatlander. He's like probably <clears throat> on 50. Mm-hmm. And so he does like old school 80s tricks. Right. You know, like Miami hoppers and cherry pickers and and he like rides old school like that. And uh, he's like a big dude, like he's jacked. He's like six two, two fifty. So I found a, f- a few that do that shit. But it's kind of funny. 
<laughs> yeah, I was good. I, was, I just assumed you were the only one. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, almost. It's not a lot, right? So, but yeah, so I might have to build a second bike just so I can get rid of the parts. Yeah, it makes sense. You're, you're right, now, that I, way. right now, I'd have to sell a bunch of single parts. But if I just built a bike, I could just sell the bike and get rid of it. Because Emily's like, you have to clean this area of the spare room out. <laughs> we have a problem here. Just starting yeah, to yeah. a garage in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's a bit of an issue. But otherwise, life's going good, man. Um, training's been good. You know, diet's on point. I got uh, the Christmas weight back off. Nice. I accidentally, like, carved up to my actual true potential, I guess. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, before Christmas, I hit 248, like I told you. Right. And then after Christmas, I was like 264 in the morning. You put on freaking 16 pounds on accident. You've just, was, we've just lost half of our viewers. They just fucking left. And, and I wasn't 16 really. pounds on accident. I was like, <laughs> oh, shit, I'm like bigger. So Ron slipped and, and fell and got huge. Yeah, what yeah. A dick. So, so yeah, that's that's what's going on. Sitting here with my dog. He's been good. He puked today. I had to clean that up. And why did he puke? I don't know. You know dogs, they fucking eat whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> it's always random when they do it. That happened you said it happened the other night. <clears throat> so yeah. I, I always put the dogs in the kennel. Yeah. Every night. They're fine with it. Then when they wake up around three, I let them come in with me. <clears throat> well, I was up and they just went to my room and went to sleep. So I was like, well, I'm not gonna move them that'd be rude right so i was like all right it's fine you guys can sleep in the bed all night i lay down i'm down for like 20 minutes i'll say i'm like no no (laughs) i look over it's on it's it's the little dog but she has managed she's five pounds she has managed to puke on the comforter the sheet and a pillowcase she got the hat trick you know, right. I was like, yeah, yeah. fuck. So, yeah, strip it all down, put it all back. And then dogs, they feel bad. They look at you like, ah, oh, shit. So I'm apologizing. I put up a post for her because I felt like I wanted her to know. I still loved her. So she checked my gram. She gave me a double like and we were good to go. That's <clears> funny. <throat> That's funny. Yeah, they, they they managed to hit all the blankets at once if the, if anything happened. Yeah, it was amazing. That's, I was like, you know what? If you're going to fucking do something, do it. A Jedi puked, I don't know, it was a few months ago, but it was just funny because he was standing on the bed and Emily and I were both in the bedroom. She was like folding laundry or something. Right. And then Jed just starts going, blah, blah, blah. Like, like, no, like, no. Like, and so Emily's like, oh my God, he's going to puke. And so I grabbed him and I just carried him and I'm carrying him through the, the, the condo while he's going, blah, blah. And I got to the kitchen sink and he just went, blah, and puked in the kitchen sink. It was perfect. <laughs> saved saved the day. She just changed the sheets. Like it was, I was like a hero. That's for sure. You know, see, heaven for people like you. That's a little sample of what the young guys who aren't in domestic relationships have to look forward to. Yeah, it's it's amazing how how cool life is when you get old. You're like, yeah, well. <laughs> it just, I saw that. I saw something like that the other day. It said it's amazing when my wife and I were dating. I, I used to uh, I used to snort, snort coke, coke off, her, off her ass. It says, but the other day she was yelling at me because I lied to the dog. Yeah, yeah, life <laughs> changes. Yeah, yeah. We used to eat each other's asses, and now we got in a fight over what color the pillows are on the couch. <laughs> I've seen a few memes like that. It's pretty funny. Funny and accurate. Anyways, <clears throat> yeah, not that I would know, but I hear yeah, you yeah, got yeah. some questions for us. Well, I got, I got, I got quite a few. I got quite a few. I got hit pretty good. So it's good I, you're um, carrying the team today because I, I decided to do a Q and A yesterday with my PT. Yeah. No, I saw you uh, peppered the fuck out of your stories. Yeah. Well, that guy. Well, because I keep getting asked questions that are way above my pay grade. Yeah. Like you have no fucking idea. Why would they ask? And I'm you? like, they're like, what would you do? I'm like, I would ask Jason. Hello. But that's apparently I, when I answer that, just say ask Jason a bunch of times. They don't know what that means. So, right, right. I just brought him into play. It worked out well. People loved it, and apparently yeah. it's going to be a regular thing now. He doesn't even know he works for me now. That's great. Awesome. <laughs> he doesn't. <even. laughs> I'm gonna not pay him either. It's gonna be great. <clears throat> okay. Um. So are we going straight to questions? I don't know. Did we miss anything? It's been a. It's been you know so far. There's been no nothing to yeah, really no talk drama. about. No drama. There's no craziness. You know. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing 
crazy going on. I mean, I got my new shirts. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, no, everything's going good for you. Screen. I'm happy yeah. with that. You know, yeah, looking good. I got Todd here know. filming. He was uh, filmed all weekend. He's here right now, eating his AJ's fancy food. Oh you know? damn! Yeah, and we he, got. Him. He can't hear me. No, he can't hear you. No, okay. he's deaf. Okay. Or I got headphones in. But anyways, yeah. yeah, we got some good shit going though. And then when we're done with this, we're gonna film the rest of the day, and then he's gonna get the hell out of here. Apparently, he has to go adult, which is shit. He's he's got places to be. We all know yeah. what that means. Work. Okay, here's here's let's uh let's start with this one because um I like talking about this stuff. It's interesting. You know. So his his question is <clears throat> if you can bench two twenty five for ten, oh, two plates for ten, two plates for ten. Mm-hmm. Are you in the strongest one percent of people in the world? No. You don't think so? Think about it. Seven, eight billion people. How many people can bench two twenty five for ten? I would hope everyone. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not how it works. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, Dusty. Shit. I think that maybe we're getting a little peek into how you view the the rest of the planet. I I, <laughs> I mean one percent though. <sighs> Just think one out of a hundred. How like pick a hundred random people at the mall. How many can bench two plates for ten? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it probably is. All right. And just think of all the the starving people and like, you know, all the people that live in like third world countries, they're not benched 225 for 10. Well, I don't know. I was going to say, maybe they are. <laughs> <laughs> there might be exceptions to that because they're tougher and harder. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I guess it might be. You know what it is, though? And it's funny you say this, but uh, it's the same with money. Right, right. Like, like, like makes, what I used to think what it took here. to be in the. No, so in the U.S., I think it's the U.S., so don't quote me for somebody who's going to check us. But I think in the U.S., it's like a little over 400 grand puts you in the top 1%, you know. And in my head, that's just – that's not that big of a number. Right, because we hear about these people that make like, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year and all this well, sort of it, stuff. Did I see you – I, I don't know if I sent you this, uh, but somebody put up a post that was so funny. It said, uh, to put things into perspective – if you made two hundred fifty thousand dollars a day since Christ was born, you wouldn't have as much money as Elon Musk. Yeah, <laughs> I saw I saw, <laughs> saw a, a meme the other day. It said uh, uh, people think Elon's rich because he has um, you know, <clears throat> three, whatever it said three hundred and fifty billion dollars or something. Yeah. And it goes, but just think if you skipped. 340 million lattes, you could have that same amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not that much. No, if but I guess I, 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 he'd be so much more ahead of the game. Like, he just didn't drink lattes. That's it. He's against coffee. That's, he drinks water out of the tap. Oh, and five expensive Starbucks stuff. <laughs> but I, I guess you're right. I mean, point being is because it doesn't seem like that much, but I guess it's true. I mean, how many people can do some bike trick? I don't fucking know. Not many. Right. <laughs> right. <clears throat> And also, too, like, you know, we, we think about it's just like anything, you know, how many people go to the gym? OK, now, what actual percentage out of all the Americans and Canadians that have gym members memberships, how many of them can bench 225 for 10? And even yeah. that's a pretty number. Yeah, it's valid. I mean, you start thinking about it, it's like some people that'd be like, oh, for one situation goal. Right. Right, you know, you know so yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. It uh, it it also also begs like the whole topic of uh, how uh, disconnected we get from reality. Hence your initial response. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> a little peek into what your world is like. I might you know? live in a bubble, just a hair, just a hair. Every chick is like Scottsdale hot. Everybody's <laughs> car is completely cleaned and detailed and polished, and it never rains, and the streets are perfectly clean. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's, that makes sense. Okay. That, uh, actually, I'm kind of liking your world. It is. It's a nice <laughs> place. You might want to move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um you know, we've talked about this before um, in various sort of ways, but uh, is is more of a focus like a 90s s conditioning making more of a return in open bodybuilding? Yes. I right. Think so I think so. I think um, <laughs> I think what's interesting is uh, 
what you're finding from talking to the athletes that are getting there and the coaches that are getting in there is all the bullshit's kind of falling away. Like I remember, um, uh, what's Patrick tour. He, uh, yeah. Somebody asked like, well, what about cheats? You know, uh, or do you follow a diet year round? And he was like, of course. Like it was like a, the dumbest question on the planet to him. And cheats were like, why? Why would you do that? And I mean, point being is I think that's becoming more and more regular. Uh, because when I look at it, when you and I started, you started before me, but when I started, you just assumed you weren't cheating for the entire prep. Yeah, like it would be like a dream if you got given one and you like you didn't really cross your mind. And then all of a sudden your coach would be like, fuck, you've dropped like 30 pounds now. Let's yeah. uh, let's let's go up hard for a day and see and just see how how much you weigh on Monday or something. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and you like like get what I mean. You've already dropped 30 pounds. Yeah, you're pretty much ready. And or or the other thing is it wasn't always. So when I first was with JJ Marsh, there was no there was not a, there was no cheeseburgers. It was okay today. We're gonna have you know 1,200 grams of rice. Right. Yeah, I know what you mean. You and know, even li- even listen to what some of our guests <clears throat> have said, like what Chad was on, and mm-hmm. he said, you know, we went real old school with Rami this year, mm-hmm. and you know, it just sort of. Um, like, like the emphasis has always been on getting shredded. Like every yeah. guy for the last 20 years has been trying to get his glutes ripped. That's the intention. Yeah. Like, so the, the goal they've had the goal, it's not like they lost sight of what they wanted to look like. They still wanted their glutes strided, but you know, like the, I don't know, like I think guys who take tons of GH have problems getting really peeled sometimes too. Right. Because you get like water issues or insulin resistant or something like that. So, you know, you think back to all the broke ass guys that you knew that had no money for half the shit and they were this dieting down. Yeah. And so I'm also speaking with more guys now that aren't bothering to use GH and not saying that it's not that it's not good and GH isn't an awesome tool, but just like the expense, like a lot of guys are like, you know what, I'm just going to like, I was going to like invest my money, <laughs> buy some <Yeah>. crypto. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This, <laughs> so, this is and, a hobby and people are remembering that. A right. Little a hobby for most people is what I mean. Yeah. But the, but, uh, the, the thing about the, the nineties conditioning is that, uh, you know, the, the, the drugs were real fact <laughs> and, and very expensive. So they actually, most of the guys weren't like, you know, with the exception of like, obviously we hear stories about Nasser and like guys pushing yeah. it. But a lot, um, you know, the whole 90s condition thing mainly is is because guys were just taking a bit of good shit and dieting really hard. Yeah. So their body wasn't like all overly chemical. And I think that when guys stress their kidneys out with crazy doses too, the water issue is like a bigger deal. Like if you're on a thousand megs of trend, which is kidney toxic and you can't get dry, you know, so I think those things go hand in hand. And if you're using just a little bit of trend, I, I don't know. That's just how I feel. Well, think so, think about like the the highest end of natural bodybuilding. Yeah. They're like, like those guys are peeled and there's details. I mean, truthfully, like even me and, and stuff like details they have, I don't have. And just think about how, how clean their bodies are. That's my point. Yep. Yeah. Like their liver has no stress. Their kidneys have no stress. Yep. You know, they're, you know, so I think there's something to being, you know, to that is, is I also think that there was back in the day, like when you're a natural bodybuilder, uh, if you're obsessive, then you don't want to lose size. So they diet longer. Uh, that's another thing, you yeah. know, cause we look and go, all right, I need, you know, eight weeks to get ready. So I'll do it in 10, you know, right. or 12 or whatever, you know, I've always liked going longer. Um, but no specific reason. It's just, I always felt like, well, if something goes wrong, if I get sick, <clears throat> if I take an injury, I'm okay. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but no, I definitely think, I definitely think we're heading back in that direction. I think, like you said, it's simplicity, <clears throat> and quite honestly, I think we're surpassing it in a lot of ways. If you look yeah. at the guys that were yeah. peeled, that's the only thing I don't like, is it's become something we kind of all agree with, like, oh, the '90s were harder, and I'm like, who? <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, you start looking like. Okay, who who in the you know 
name five guys since we all pretend it was all of them that were harder than Ian was at the Olympia this year. In yeah. Whatever year. Very, there very there true. aren't five. <laughs> so when, whenever, if I ever seemed to agree with the sentiment that 90s conditioning was better, mm-hmm. I'm looking at it from a depth point of view. Right. I don't necessarily mean the top guys. They're just as hard as ever. Like Ian, yeah. Ian's, Ian's as hard as Dorian was. Right. Right. Like, so, um, you know, that, that type of thing. Like Fuad just put up a picture from the, from the Atlantic City in like 08. Yeah. Or whatever gnarly. that was. Yeah, the rear double. Yeah. And it's like, that's as good as anyone ever. And then like as conditioned as, as you know, all the top guys in the 90s. Yep. Um, but what I'm talking about is at regional shows, at national shows. Yeah, that's the depth sure. of The depth of the classes. That's where I see it. So, you know, I, I can agree and disagree with the statement 90s conditioning is better. It depends on who right. you're talking about. And what right. level you're talking about. I mean, the Olympia this year was fucking awesome. Yeah. That's like, a valid point I didn't think about. It. I guess you do tend, when that sentiment is stated, I and most people look right to the highest end. But you're right. Like, at the at the local level, and I haven't seen it yet. Remember I had that rant earlier in the year, or late right. last year, because I went to a show and I was like, oh, so no one dieted. Right. Like, I mean, it just blew my mind because – the show was there for someone to win just by being peeled. Like a bantamweight right. could have won the entire thing if he was inside out. So I've seen a few lightweights win overalls in like the last five years. Yeah. You know, and that actually is like kind of evidence that conditioning is an issue. You know what the other thing is, though, and I think uh, most coaches can agree somewhere along the way, this became a thing like you could never get flat. I'm a little flat. I'm like, you're seven weeks out. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I remember, <laughs> I remember I had, you know, I had a coach uh, when I won the 99 Albertas, which was like a, a good show to win. Like it's, it's like winning a good state show. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you usually do well at nationals if you win the Albertas, right? That's how it right. used to be. And, um, which I did first time I went to nationals, I got second. So, you know, right. it was, uh, it's, it's a, it's a good show to win. And, um, I remember the coach I had for that show, his name was Brian Logue and a uh, great guy. And, uh, I remember the whole diet. He was like, I don't, I don't give a shit how small you feel like I want you to feel like I want you to be like calling me going. I think I'm shrinking. That's what we're doing to you. I don't give a shit. Right. And I was like, okay. And cause he promised me I'd win if I listened to him. He goes, if you listen to me, you'll win. And I was like, okay. Right. So it was just, I just did it. And I remember like looking down at my arms and being like, fuck, I feel like a swimmer. Right. And then like when I get my stage photos back, I'm like, oh, I destroyed everyone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, never mind. It wasn't even close. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just that's the, you know, and, and that's a good experience to have early on. Like that was only my third show. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, I had that experience on my third show and felt what it was like to win everything. Like, oh, fuck. OK, if you just do that, you beat everybody. OK, that's yeah. programmed in my head now. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. I guess it's easier if let's say you do something like ultra hard and then it mm-hmm. pays off. <laughs> yeah. Obviously it's an easier lesson to learn. Yeah. Then it's like, Oh, okay. Well, plus, I mean, I think you also teaches you that like so many people are worried. Like I, it always blows my mind. Like you're a middleweight and you're worried about being the biggest. It's like, well, you're a middleweight. Yeah. 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 yeah That's yeah. not going to be what, ha- cause I never went into a regional show with any thoughts other than the overall. So, I had to beat everybody in my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like, well, I got to be the biggest guy because I'm a super. Well, then the problem is then I'm the fat guy once I'm against the light heavyweight. Right. You know what I mean? So it was kind of like, no, fun. you just have to be nuts yeah, and you'll yeah. be fine. So that's true. It's good. It's a good point, though. And, and I think part of that, what you said, and I do that with clients. Do you ever have somebody that's in the off season, so they're real, real heavy when they come to you? And I'll tell them, okay, you're about to hit a phase where you're no longer as big as you were. You're also not in shape, so you're going to think I'm fucking up, and you look worse. Right. Stick with me. Right. Just keep going. If you do that, once you get through, I call it the ugly phase, you'll start to look bigger just because you're getting harder. You know, yeah, yeah, what yeah. it is is they're in their T-shirt, and they feel like they're swimming, and then when they take their shirt off, it's not drastically better, and they're down 17 pounds. Yep. <laughs> you know, yep. it's, a, it's the mind fuck. Like, I don't really look much better, but I'm definitely smaller. I, I, I used to say, you know, when I was real heavy, I could take off 20, 20 pounds, like taking off a pair of socks. So true. 
So true. <laughs> you still look exactly fucking same. Yeah, you're like, like great. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just lighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, here's one for you. What do you feel gets more overanalyzed, diet or training? Jeez. Overanalyzed. Any more? <laughs> Both. I mean, ah, oh God, I don't even. I don't. What do you think? I don't know what I think is more overanalyzed. I mean, I think in my experience with some of my clients, they're pretty well trusting me on the diet side. Um, but I do get a lot of like, actually, I had a guy this week. It was perfect. Only weakness on his physique is his back. Right. You know, I mean, everything else is great. And I get an email that says, hey, I'm thinking my hamstrings are lagging a bit. Now, this is the same email where he stated that his arms are small. He's like, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to split my quads and my hams up. And then I'm going to train back with buys and chest with tries. What do you think? And I'm like, so the weakness is your arms. You've already stated that earlier. Now we're going to make them secondary to a giant muscle group. Okay, strike one. Then we're going to take your best body part, your legs, and put more focus on them. When are we going to worry about your back? Right. Because I told, So I emailed back. I'm like, I don't give a shit what you do with anything. In fact, maybe we just train everything else less and we do back twice a week or three times a week. Right. <laughs> Like, you know, because it's that those analyzations of the little tiny, tiny stuff. And it's like, I, I tell people up front, most of the most of our starting point trainings I already have written. I alter a couple things based on injuries and send yep. them because it's it's going to be different for you. It's going to whip your ass, I promise. Yeah. So how, how I look at it is I think training's is overanalyzed more than diet. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I say mm -hmm. that is because. A lot of people follow if it fits your macros now. True. And that's actually like a much less analytical way to eat. Right. Right. You're actually simplifying it, mm -hmm. making it more livable and making it easier to do. So and most people, I mean, can do great on that style of eating. Right. Right. They can make you can make really good gains on that. I'm just saying contest time. You might want to. <laughs> swap swap things around a bit but but it depends on if you're counting oreos as your like carbs and right. fats but um so there's there's that 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 sort of a, um idea is in most people's nutrition already to kind of simplify and keep things simple i think most people are doing okay with that because right. a lot of the clients i come to they're like oh here's my like everyone's got an app now <laughs> and so they like, so they'll send me screenshots of their app right how many do you get right here's my here's yeah. my current diet and they'll send me their screenshots and I'm like, oh, okay, they're actually doing okay here. This is there's nothing wrong with this. I might up their carbs, right? Um, but uh, when it comes to diet, I think people are training. People are spending so much time, um, you know, like you said, worrying about the perfect split or the perfect frequency <clears throat> or mm -hmm. the you know perfect this, perfect that, um, and and not enough time just just pushing themselves really really hard. That, that's the thing you nail that I'm, that I'm it's funny because this this must be going on you know our little bubble is so small I've seen multiple uh coaches write up something that basically says for all the things you're worried about with this that and the other you don't train that hard right and I think that that is always the eye opener we've talked about this before like I wish that every athlete I've ever worked with could come train with me one time yeah, it would change a lot of things, you know, because because, you know, you have a thing where you it's just it wouldn't matter what day it is because that's how you train every day. And then they're like, oh, OK, that's training. Got it. Check, you know, <laughs> <clears throat> but it's surely yeah. not the magic of the program. I think I told you that. So when I first started working with Aceto, I, you know, I mean, I trusted him with everything. And I said, hey, how do you suggest I train? And his right. email back was fucking hard. <laughs> I was like, got it. Yeah. Fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Noted. So, so here, so I, I put a, there's a guy that I'm, I'm helping. His name's Brandon. Great guy. Um, and he, he won a physique show this year. Okay. And, uh, he's sort of, uh, you know, he wants to go pro. He wants to push it, see what he can do. And he's also looking at classic physique because he's got good legs. Right. So, of course, I'm I'm, you know, 
nudge, happy with nudge, that idea. Nudge. Yeah, yeah, nudge. Whatever he wants to do, I'll help him. Because whatever you want to do, as long as it's classic. <clears throat> right, right, right. So anyway, so you know that means, but but he trains he trains his legs anyways. Like he's got pretty good legs. Um, but he came and I uh, put him through a leg workout yesterday. Mm-hmm. And this is a guy who trains hard, right? Trains hard, puts in a lot of effort. You know, great with his diet. Win one his shows. You know, um, and uh, so we did. Uh, like I said, revolutionary leg program. We did lying leg curls. Three movements. <laughs> we did uh, leg press. We did axe squats. <laughs> we did leg extensions. And then we did it single leg curls because by that point he'd thrown up three times. So we didn't get the stretch um, in. Okay, I got you. <laughs> he was a little fucked up. But yeah. um he, and he but he puked uh he puked uh twenty minutes in mm-hmm. and then he puked again forty five minutes in. And then I think he may have thrown up a third time after the workout. So but he didn't quit. And right. he sent me a message afterwards and he goes, thank you for today. I got mentally tougher today. Right. And, and, uh, I said, that's way more important than what, what your workout was. It doesn't even matter if your workout was that well structured. Yeah. Yeah. The workout today doesn't, isn't even really that important. Right. But the fact that you got mentally tougher is now something that goes all, all this year you know yeah. and and you know it, it doesn't matter that we didn't get the stretch movement in right yeah because yeah. <laughs> i already you know, knew i was like wait a minute i know Ron's yeah well uh, af- yeah like uh, you know after he right. after he puked after the leg presses i was like okay i got to get him through these hacks he, and then it's right. on the extensions and he's probably going to live yeah. right and then One i after, of death. <laughs> yeah and then after the second puke i thought okay he's just i definitely am not going to push this guy to do stiffs because they won't you know, it won't be any point. He's too, he's really fucked up. Yeah. So, um, it was, uh, the standing leg curls, but he didn't quit and fucking forcing reps the whole time and pushing them. But, uh, you know, so, so people often, you know, what is the perfect workout? What is the perfect split? Well, nothing compares to building your mentality by mm-hmm. just training really hard. It doesn't even matter if your program's only like, okay. Yeah. Or your equipment but, or. Yeah. You no, know, but if you build that mental toughness, that's like such a, an investment, I guess. You, you know, know uh, uh, you remember, you know, Gina Davis that we had on? Yes. Uh, her, <laughs> I love it. Her, her saying is, uh, uh, the perfect set is death minus one. <laughs> so, <that's, laughs> right, right, right. It's so funny. I, the first time I saw that, it's on her belt. I was like, I love that. You know, because you and I have had this conversation before, but I had, uh, three of the guys from condemned were in, uh, in town and they came and trained with me. And after a set of the pendulum, one of the guys, you know, when he got done, he literally went down and just laid there for a minute. We were filming and I took it as a moment because everyone's mentality is, Oh, you, you kicked his ass. And actually it's no, he did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. He kicked his own ass. He kicked his own ass. He made sure now he just knows where it is and he's going to do that again and again. Like, it's like you, because you you know you used to get sick. Like you pushed yourself there every time, you know, or however yeah. many times it would happen. And I always think it's funny because people think that, like, oh, the trainers are badass, or oh, that's a weakness. And I'm like, that's a strength. He could have stopped two reps shy and stood up and walked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He literally shook the rep out safely. I had to spot him through, and when he racked it, it was just easier to sit. And take a minute, then go. And it was like, I always want to drive that home because people, like, they want to be a hard ass, just walks away. And I'm like, well, if you can just walk away, then you had more. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's good. It's good for him to hit that that point and learn, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. And then you you build up a tolerance for that intensity, too. And then you do just walk away. Yeah. Like, yeah, like you do you. get to that point where it's normal. It's another day at the office. And yeah. then you get that. And I know you have this. We, <laughs> I had a, about two weeks ago. I don't know what the hell we did. Nothing different. And I was wrecked. Right. I mean, sore. And of course, what's your brain do? Well, shit, what was I doing the week before? Was it not a good day? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, even though you know soreness doesn't mean shit, actually, I don't right. care who you are, how long you're in this. When you have a really, like, sore day, you get mad at yourself for the days before that. Like, man, maybe I did right. leave one. <laughs> yeah. And you always wonder, like, what the fuck made him so sore? Like, it was, I always kind of just trained my normal way. But 
Yeah. Maybe it was a slow rep I did or the extra forced rep. Or, <laughs> I'm know. always looking, you know, and probably all it is you were a little dehydrated or something stupid. <laughs> right, right, right. You didn't drink my, enough after the My gray the pants are a little bit heavier weight than my black ones, and I sweat a little more. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I know what you mean. And um, it's uh, it's never like the goal. Like, so I, some of my buddies bug me because, you know, I was a puker for years, and then I sort of have a reputation of, people thrown up when they come to do legs for the first time. And I never like ever try to do that. That's not the point. Yeah. It's just, you know, and then also too, I think that, you know, some people may have overstimmed for that leg day or they might've like, you know, they're all, Oh, I'm doing legs with Ron. And then they overstim a little bit and they kind of fuck themselves, which, you know, I, you know, I don't want to take credit for. Um, right. <laughs> so there's a little bit of that. So, but yeah, it's never the, never the, the goal. It's like, ah, fuck, you know, it's like something you got to work around. It's a hindrance, right? It's yeah. not something you want. Um, you're shooting for it. That's, I did the, you know, it's funny. I don't know when I got all my products, uh, the first day that I was using them was hamstrings. Right. Uh, and I had never used a pre-workout. So I did a half serving right. for that exact reason. Oh yeah. I was like, I need to make sure I haven't, I mean, I've read the label, but you know, they all hit different or the pungency of the flavor or whatever. I'm like, I can't risk me not being used to this being the reason I get sick or the workout gets fucked up. So it was right. literally, you can go up to two scoops with theirs. It's those small ones. So I literally took a half scoop the first day, a scoop the second day, and finally was on two full scoops and realized I was fine before I like went for it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, we sell pre-workout by the scoop at the gym. All right. right. So a lot of people come in and they're like, oh, I'll have a scoop of this, have a scoop of that. And it's interesting to hear, like, we have like six different pre-workouts that all sell really well by the scoop. Right. So like some people, like everyone has their own preference, you know? I mean, you might have someone who works in an office and they've already had four cups of coffee that day. Right. So they just want to pump one because when they have anything with caffeine in it, they just like, oh, that's too much, you know. Um, so it's it's interesting. Some people love the almost like the stim free ones. That's mm-hmm. all they want. Oh, the stim free this, stim free that. And other people are like, give me the fucking psychopath, you know. <laughs> and they you do know? it every time. Yeah, I and then do, I like the strong one on small body parts, back and legs. I'll go stim free and maybe have a cup of coffee. We had to like ask, we had to like have a meeting. Like, are we going to like, what if, cause there was this one guy that's always like, oh, I want two scoops of that. And so we had to have a, like a meeting. Like, are we allowed to sell two scoops to one person? <laughs> like, what's we the gotta put, Sir, we're going to put them in two separate glasses. What you do once we hand you two cups is your right. business. You and your friend can go <laughs> drink your two separate <laughs> servings. <laughs> Yeah. We cannot yeah. put two scoops into one cup. That is against and, the rules. And then you wonder, and then you, and then you realize, as a business owner, you're like, oh, that's why they have all those stupid liquor laws that I had to follow as a bartender that I exactly. thought were dumb. Exactly. Yeah. But they now were as a dumb. business They're owner, protecting that thing. Right. Yep. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. You know. Once you've been sued a couple times in business, you're like, oh, so I can be sued for anything. Got it. Right. I got a. I got a. I got a separate cups for you. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't yeah. know the coffee was hot when it burnt you. Oh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's here's one. Um, should you end a cut if other health problems need or if mental health problems need to be addressed with? You should end whatever is happening if you're having mental health problems. I mean, I don't I don't like to use the word cut because that has nothing to do with nothing. If you're mentally in an unstable place, then bodybuilding in general is the least important thing. You know, now I'm assuming he's talking about drugs or the exhaustion from it or whatever. That's kind of what I think is, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe getting ready for a show or something. Yeah. And if that's the case, then my answer is still the same because you're not going to be great. But you do have to at some point. If that happens a couple of times, you're not meant to bodybuild. In my opinion. Right. Like if if, if you mean if like the mental health issues coincide with the cut every like time, every time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. You know, because there is something, it's kind of like, in uh, hate to rampage, but I think bodybuilders, we, we get a bad name for ourselves because of how we act as if our diet is someone else's fucking problem. Right. You know, I remember um, Junior Nationals, 2010, fuck, I'm old. Um, <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at the hotel at the, uh, you know, checking in, and there's a guy next to me, and 
he's getting snappy with the lady behind the counter. And I'm like looking at him thinking, all right, I'm about to say something. And then I hear him say the thing I hate the most. Sorry, I don't mean to be a dick. I'm low carb. Oh. And I'm like, no, you're just a fucking tool. Yeah. So, you know, and it's funny because I'm over here thinking, well, I, the rest of us are also starving. Uh, I can get my room without being a dick and I'm going to beat you tomorrow. And all those things happen. So I think some people just you also use, you know, have to understand that if that's how you bump into mental issues, whether it's the drugs, the suffering from the diet or whatever. This might not be for you. Yeah. If so, the the one. So the only health problem that I would continue like. The, the, like the only exception, uh, just the way this question was worded, if it's not like contest related and there's no drugs involved, you're just doing like a serious like like weight loss thing. Yeah. Then in th- in that situation, I'd say well, that's probably good to keep doing because it keeps you like focused on eating healthy and all that stuff. So <laughs> I just want to like mis misunderstand his question. So um, you know how it is with these. Yeah, when they when they use the word mental health though, that's when I yeah, get a little they, sideways because yeah, well that, that was sort of anger issues on. or whatever. Yeah, 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 exactly. It just depends, but yeah, for the most part, um, you know, definitely not uh, pushing yourself with anything that could be making things worse. Yeah, jeez. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for watching another podcast here at Think Big Bodybuilding Media. And thank you to our great sponsor, TrueNutrition.com, for making this all possible. TrueNutrition.com is owned by Dante Trudell, the creator of DC Training. He wanted to create a supplement company that offered high-quality third-party tested supplements at a fair price. High-quality protein powders, just about every type you could think of. Huge variety of flavors, plus health and performance supplements. Check them out, TrueNutrition.com. And hey, if you use our code ADVICES, you directly support our podcasting. Thanks, guys. Let's get back to the program. Okay, here's one. Um, I just turned 35 and have never competed before. Is it too late to chase a pro card? I'm going to let you answer first because I'm going to rant. Go ahead. (laughs) I would say that that at 35 years old, uh, never competing before, um, at any age, never competing before, the idea of chasing a pro card um, just shouldn't be the focus. And uh, that's a huge problem. And it, it, it 99.9% of the time, unless you're a 19-year-old Jay Cutler, um, it just leads to like huge disappointment in the experience of competing. And it, it's not, it's just not the right approach. And if you talk to all the guys like who have like, you know, talk to all like the pros, I'm talking about bodybuilding, talk to yeah. all the pros, like none of them were like, Oh yeah, I just decided I was going to be a pro bodybuilder and I started competing. That's not how it happened for any of them. True. They were like, oh, I love bodybuilding and I thought it was awesome and I, I fucking was training and everyone was telling me I should compete and I did a show and I fucking won and I won the next show and then I thought, fuck, I'm going to nationals. Right. Like, it, it's, or they grinded away for years and years to win each show and they just wanted to get to the next level. But like the whole like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna pursue the th- being a pro bodybuilder even though I have never been on stage before. I think that causes way more problems and ruins it for a lot of people. Right. No, I think, I think you nailed it. I was, that's why I said I was going to rant is, I don't Wait, know what it is about you? this. You, know, you did it flawlessly. I don't know what it is about our sport that people are just like, ah, fuck, I'm going to go pro. Like, you wouldn't, like, you don't pick up a, a new set of titleists and be like, you know what, I'm going to be a professional golfer. Also, I have you know, for <laughs> You know, you don't just dive in that day. Yeah. You, and and what would you tell your kid? Like, if you're getting them into baseball, would you be like, all right, kid, we're going to fucking go pro? Yeah. I'm going to start picking out colleges before you hit grade six. Yeah. Like, I think the better thing is, and it's so funny that this came up today, because uh, today, uh, Dorian put up a picture and it said on the picture, when I started bodybuilding, I never dreamed of being Mr. Olympia. I, saw that. I just That's wanted right. to get better. That's so funny. And I saw that and I was, and I literally, I haven't had time to scan today. I, that popped. And when I got into bodybuilding, truthfully, I was done with hockey. I realized that I needed an outlet for athletic something because I was like a nine to five. I didn't know what to do. Right. I went to, I got a gym membership, 
this is literally like the check check of it. I got a gym membership. I walked into Gold's. I was intimidated because I was a little out of my element because I was at the hardcore gym in the city. And there was a sign on the wall for a show in like eight or nine weeks. And I was like, All right, I'm going to do that. That's funny. Yeah, you, you. that's awesome. That's that's how it starts. And that's how it should start very organically. And if you act like the fact that you think you want to be a pro and you've never competed, that's what's ludicrous. Right. Like you don't have any clue what life as a what would it take to be or sustain being Are a pro bodybuilder. Like yeah. Like who? That's the thing. Like it's like in order to be a pro golfer, like you said, you got to play golf. And you got to play golf so much that people start going, man, you're always just golfing. You never come yeah. out anymore. Yep. And then you start making golf friends so you can golf together. And then your wife's starting to get irritated because you're golfing all the time. And you're golfing, 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 golfing. And you're like, fuck, I love this. Yeah. That's what you have to do in bodybuilding before you can even consider being a pro, you know? I used to see, um, and I'm just going to say by name because I don't mind. It's not an insult. I remember like Gabe would when he was getting ready for shows he'd bitch the whole way and he would i can't wait for this to be over and then he'd tell me man i can't wait to turn pro and i'm like why do you want to be a pro you hate this like you love being a bodybuilder and you're a big fucking dude and you love to train and you're a freak but if that's all i loved i don't want to be a professional bodybuilder i want to be a gym rat and in this world i could still make a ton of money and make a living out if i want to but I think that that's another thing is like you don't even know if you like it because I'll be honest, like and you've done these years where you've you do the USA's and you're like, oh, well, I'm going to I'm going to do North Americans, I'm nationals. You diet the whole year and it's fun the entire time. Yeah. Why would you do this to yourself? Oh, I'm just in the groove right now and it's awesome. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. someone who isn't one, like I hate to say it like this, but someone who isn't one of us would be like, well, you're missing out on life. I'm like, no, this is life. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. And and one more thing before we leave the subject. I, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to say this. Yes, I brought it out of him. <laughs> Anyone who comes up to me and says that they want to chase a pro card is talking to someone who plays second at 10 pro qualifiers <laughs> and did 13 nationals and four north americans they have no fucking idea what the what the term chase pro card even (laughs) is in their wildest imaginations could they put together that concept from where they are at the point they make that statement imagine had you said that how's that well ron it's going to take 13 professional attempts and you're going to put yourself through hell for 15 16 years model and you're going to model your entire life around it so that it fits and every relationship and job and and vacation you take is going to be completely tailored and dictated by your bodybuilding (laughs) it's actually funny when you start to point it out that way because i had a kid reach out to me um, i I want to start chasing a pro card Oh, oh, pull up a Let's chair, <laughs> pull up a chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but think about this because it's actually accurate and there's, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but in that sentence, if you were like, you know, Oh, is that your, is that your girlfriend? Cool. Pull her down here real quick. So when she starts resisting, okay. And she's like, yeah, yeah, you go get rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because if you really are chasing that and it's really the thing you want the most, that's what you would do. Right. And, that, and that's like, well, I would never do that. It's cool. So let's just do a show. <laughs> You're like, let's just do okay. a show. She can stay. <laughs> that wasn't too much, was it, Dusty? Uh, no, I mean, I got to be honest. With you. I, I don't want to chase a pro card after hearing that shit. It only took me four years. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. So, anyways, back to the original question. Is it is it is it too late to chase a pro card? I mean, I'm not saying you can't turn pro like you. Who knows? In five years, you might get a master's pro card in whatever division you're in or something. You know, it might have 44 years old or whatever that uh, what's his name did last year. (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. But, you know, like there's always like crazy exceptions to things. But, you know, I mean, Vince Taylor started training when he was 30, you know, so. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. So it's it's like, you know, there's always exceptions, but it just it's just probably not a good like focus. It, it, get into bodybuilding, compete. It might change your life for the better in a hundred ways. Yep. 
know what I mean? So that's so I'm not saying that this person shouldn't compete and shouldn't try to be as good as they possibly can, but the focus shouldn't be on being a pro. It it if that if that's going to happen, it'll 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 make itself it'll yeah. organically show up in the in the spectrum of possibilities. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Very true. Here's one. Now I don't I'm I'm interested to know like oh boy. I don't even know if you've even read this book. Okay. Because it's sort of a generational thing. In your opinion, how important of a contribution was Arnold's Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding? I have uh, sold that book many, many times because it was in my store. store? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> um, never read it because by the time I was re- would have read it, it was dated. Right. You know, um, so a contribution to me, I would say it was huge because so many people, uh, that was the go-to before the internet. You know, when people used to come into my store, they were like, I want to, I want to know bodybuilding. I'm like, one second, please. Do you want to know the chemical side? This is anabolics 2002. Or do you want to know the bodybuilding side? This is the encyclopedia. Bo- oh, both. Here you go. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I uh, I remember getting one for Christmas. Right. When I was like 15 years old, I got Arnold's Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding, and it was the original one with the old pictures in it. It wasn't they updated it and put like pictures of Dorian and Lee and all this stuff in it. I didn't know. That. And um, yeah, they updated it and they swapped all the pictures out for like modern color photos. And um, I saw that hurts a ver- my soul. Yeah, I saw a version of it and I was like, oh, I don't like this at all. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if it was like a limited edition or the I don't know what exactly I was looking at, but it's had the same cover. Um, but uh, I had the original one with all the Tom Platt's pictures in it and yeah. Boyer Co. and everyone in there. And it was like it contributed huge. And yeah, it was dated. And, you know, but I remember like reading about diet and Arnold's like, yeah, you need calories. So I used to make shakes with like eggs and fucking yogurt and fruit and ice cream. And and I'm like, Oh, boom, let's do it. And I just started blending up big shakes and drinking them and gaining weight. And, Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, uh, he would, he would talk about, um, you know, how hard he pushed himself and and it it was crazy high volume his advanced program hours, hours. hours in the gym. But when you're young, like that was actually good. I did this crazy Arnold volume the first like two years I worked out. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that teaches you motor skills and because you're not using heavy weights yet. You know, it's yeah. not like you're DC training when you're 15. Yeah. Um, but you're like you're, you're you're putting out this enormous effort. It's building this huge tolerance for workload and it building this, you know, I mean, you're a kid. You can handle anything. Right. So. I was just killing myself in the gym, training legs for two hours. Oh, you got to do six exercises for quads and like boom, 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 boom. My brain (laughs) actually switched that to sets. Yeah. You know, like just, (laughs) yeah. And, 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 and you taught you to train pretty fast too. Cause you're like, shit, my mom's picking me up at (laughs) five (laughs) 30. It's four o'clock. I gotta go. (laughs) I got to pump chest, chest, shoulders and triceps, you know? Um, it was a great book and just all the exercise selection in there and all the ideas. I remember going to the gym and doing everything like, you know, every single rear delt exercise he had in there on the benches and cables and, and everything. It was, it was a, it was a great, it was a great contribution to, to bodybuilding. And I think it shaped and, and, uh, molded a lot of guys because, you know, pretty much anyone who started training in the eighties and nineties had a copy of it. Right. And, um, so it, you know, a lot of the, the, the physiques that people look at now are those guys were kids that had that book. Right. So, yeah, I think it was, it was awesome, you know, and it's like a time capsule of history too. like to look through it, you know, look through it now and look at the leg equipment they're using. Right. Like crazy. Like, you know what sucks about all this? You know, that whole thing, you got an old guy like me and the only thing I got out of it was they ruined the book with new pictures. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why did you guys fuck it up? Oh, man. Okay. Um, Here's one. Can you and Dusty talk about optimizing natty gains? Stuff that people don't necessarily know. Man, I mean, this is kind of a good uh, 
slide over from what I was thinking during our last the last question, which was when you mentioned eating a lot of food, you needed calories. Um, this is for natties and uh, enhanced, but I think one of the biggest things now is we have so much information that we're overcomplicating everything. I mean, natural or not, you need to train hard enough to elicit the body's need to change. You need right. to feed it enough to start that recovery. And then the big one is you got to give it time to recover and grow. Um, a basic thing that I used to tell like young guys coming in to just try to oversimplify was in order to grow, you had to have stimulus, you had to have recovery and you had to have growth. And this, the idea was you stimulate on Monday, those couple days where you're sore Tuesday and Wednesday, that's your recovery. But the Thursday and Friday, you're still not training, but you feel okay. That's when you're growing. You don't want to touch that again until Saturday or Sunday. Right. As a natural bodybuilder, that amount of time is going to be longer. You know, I think that that's a thing where you got to factor in is how much can your body take, not just in one session, but how much time does it take to recover so you can actually grow? Because if right. all you're doing is stimulating and recovering and then stimulating again, there's no time for your body to actually get better and grow. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Um, I, I think something I would add to that is that, you know, aside from the odd exception, there aren't any real differences. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like oh, there there's, there, there's, there's the recovery time thing. Yep. And that also could be handled. Like maybe they do fewer sets more frequently. Right. So there's also like, which is, you know, which goes for everybody, but um, there's a recovery time thing that you have to manage. But other than that, everything else is principally the same. Yep. You know, you need to eat, sleep and train the position like your hand position on the bar doesn't change if you're natty, mm -hmm. you know, you don't put your feet in a different spot if you're natty. You yeah, know, your like, rest should be the same. Yeah. I mean, all the yeah. rules, all the rules apply. I agree. Yeah. So so that's that's you know what the biggest yeah. thing would be is patience. <laughs> <laughs> patience taking longer to diet yeah take longer to diet and understand it just takes longer to get the same result right right okay um what other podcasts are you guys listening to right now uh you know what i don't i don't really consume i don't have time to consume a lot of other people's <laughs> stuff anymore yeah. i will get the um it's kind of funny but i i look at instagram as my cliff notes so a lot of the podcasts, including Rogan and all those, uh, will have kind of the, the things I want to see will pop up on someone else's feed and I'll get to see them real quick. Right. Um, the only thing that I will admit that I like to do is I like to look at some of the bigger podcasts and see what they're doing because between number one, I've got this one and I'm also working on a second podcast I want to start is uh, I want to be better at it. And there are some really, really good podcasts to watch to see why you suck. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's funny, but um, you and it's something a lot of people don't know that they, they get confused on. Like when, when you and I decided to start the show, remember, you're like, well, how do you want to do this? And I'm like, all right, so this is a radio show. You got like the main guy and then you got the back guy. I'm like, I have to be the back guy because I was so used to being interviewed. I didn't know how to be the interviewer and not like fuck it up and talk too much and take over if we were interviewing somebody. You remember that was like the first thing I told you. I'm like, right. Ask me to jump in on the side. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, like, okay. I don't know how to do this. So, I mean, yeah, I don't consume for the entertainment part as much. Um, and definitely not for the education on the sport, but more for like, I think Fuad is a phenomenal interview. I just think he's great at, all of his podcasts, um, which is funny because somebody jumped on ours the other day because we had both interviewed Chad and he was like, oh, so much better that I didn't have to listen to whiny Fuad. And I'm like, really? He's fucking awesome at what I he love does. His I wish I had like, more time. To, I wish I had more time to listen to all of them. Yeah. I mean, I think you know? he just knows how to do it. Whereas like on the flip, um, I have done Palumbo shows a few times as a guest and I always felt like I never actually got to answer a question. Right. I'd be like halfway through the answer and he's like, ah, and he would take over. And I was like, oh, you're going to answer it. Okay. 
You asked me. <laughs> well, so if 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 I have a little spare time, mm-hmm. I will put on Fuad's real bodybuilding where he mm-hmm. interviews someone. Right. I I actually don't watch bodybuilding and bollocks very often. Right. Because I mean it's it probably a in very like you know when I do turn it on it's funny but I'm like cooking something and I, I don't ever finish the episode because I'm just too busy for, for to sit and listen to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but real bodybuilding, like when there's one guest, you know, like I'll like, I'll put that on and I'll, I'll listen to that. I'll, I'll play it while I'm doing cardio sometimes if I like the guest, you mm-hmm. know? So I, cause you know, that's, that's like real information on that. Whereas bodybuilding and bollocks is like, you know, they're all fucking around and they kind of swap the guys out every week and it's a lot of fun, but it's just not for me. That's not what I'm going to spend my time on as much. Mm-hmm. Yep. But to be honest, I don't listen to bodybuilding podcasts much. Yeah. Um, there's a, you know, you know how Rogan's on Spotify now? Yes. She drives me crazy. I don't, I never, I, I hardly ever watch his show anymore because I'm, I'm on YouTube when I'm eating. Right. I'm not on Spotify. Right. And, um, and, and there's a guy named Lex Friedman. Uh, he's a super smart dude and he has a, a podcast where he interviews like scientists. Right. And, um, you know, for example, he just had an episode this week. This guy is a astrophysics professor from Harvard University Mm -hmm. and he comes on and they do like an hour and a half interview. And I'm just riveted to that. Like I'm just sitting there, like I eat my meal and then I just sit there and watch like the last hour. Like I'm just riveted and he's talking about black holes and they're postulating on the only two possibilities that black holes can do. One is everything that gets sucked in gets compacted into the densest thing we could imagine right for eternity or it goes somewhere right like does it like the whole idea do you pop out in another dimension right do you get you pop out do you slide through space and time and come out in another area of the universe we just don't know and they talked about that for like 30 minutes and i was just like holy fuck this is crazy you know <laughs> And then the other idea is that it just gets compacted and continues to get denser and denser and denser beyond our wildest comprehensions. Right. And so like listening to that stuff and he's, he's talking about different anomalies. Like there's an object called the, um, a Nua Nua, I think they call it like a Hawaiian name. Right. But they've discovered this long cylindrical rock, but it doesn't, reflect light like a rock and it behaves differently and it actually changed speeds at one point and it's like out beyond our solar system they're measuring it it's like passing by our solar system but it's actually its speed increased and they're like okay that's fucked because it should just have the same speed that it got thrown out at right and it shouldn't actually pick up speed so did we just pass by on like an alien artifact something that was made billion years ago by another civilization is it a probe is it is it a relay station? Are there millions of them, like cell phone towers all over the galaxy? It's their airplane. <laughs> like, like what's the con- like? So these these theoretical concepts of what this object could be, and I'm just right. like totally riveted. I can't even stop watching it till it's over. And Emily's like, "What are you listening to? What's wrong with you?" And yeah. this is why you're the king of useless information. Right. I can't help myself. So there's the odd thing like that. Like I'd I'd rather watch that than a bodybuilding podcast, just because it's like I sat there and just learned. So, um, yeah, there's stuff like that gets me sometimes. You know what I love about it? You learned theories. She didn't actually learn anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, yeah. you know, that's the, that's the beauty of, like, the, the way that works, though, because that's my brain. I'd be like, so this isn't for sure? I'll probably never know. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But that, that makes sense. Yeah, I think it's surprising what, uh, what you don't consume. I think also one thing that you don't realize is – um, the, the, so there are a couple guests that Fuad has that I don't know on real bodybuilding right. that I, that I want to go watch because right, I don't know like, anything about them. And I'm like, Oh, I, there's probably some shit I can learn here. Right. You know, like, where, can, you name, where, can you name someone? He just had a guy. I don't even know who it was. I just, I just skimmed. He had a couple, I don't even know. I literally have no idea who it was, but there was a couple clips where I was like, Ooh, this guy knows his shit and I don't know who he is. So oh, okay. I don't I don't even have a feel for what he could have. Whereas like John Meadows, for example, he's coached me. You know what I mean? Right. And don't get me wrong, he's right, right. he's advancing, 
but it's not as uh, it's not like I have no fucking idea who you are. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, we've you know, had him on the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, here's one. What is the longest amount of time you've ever gone without shaving or shaping your beard? <laughs> oh, my God. How homeless That's, have you gotten? It's been you know what? I haven't. I can't do it because my hair, which actually I almost did before the show, it will grow over my eyeballs upwards. There's oh, your hair. beard comes right up, eh? Dude, my, my beard is up here if I don't shave it. I go I go get it professionally done every single Thursday. Ah, there you <laughs> like, go. Plus, yeah. isn't there like a like like isn't there like kind of a community standards rule in Scottsdale? Yeah, I think they'll evict me. Yeah, I'm pretty like sure. they make you move. Don't well, they make you move to Phoenix? Unless you're cool. <laughs> like cool guys who's like ah he's cool that's definitely not me so right yeah you know it's it's funny because i always say like i don't try very hard that lowers the standards and then they're like but you get your beard shipped every week i'm like so if like post malone comes to town they don't make him clean up yeah because he's cool and he has right. tattoos on his fucking face so what are you gonna do yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well that that's where money meets and they're like ah but he's rich right right you can wear <laughs> bedroom slippers and hospital pants yeah. i mean don't you remember that's uh I, there was a there was a quote from I think it was Dolly Parton back in the day. So it costs a lot of money to look this cheap. <laughs> and I'm like, makes sense to me. So yeah, she's, no, I, I, she's she's a spark plug. I she's had love some that. great quotes. Dolly Parton's had some great quotes. Yeah, and, yeah. That, and I love that. I live in Scottsdale. I see it all the time. I'm like, I know exactly what that means. Costs a lot of money to look this cheap. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'd say I went, uh, I think I easily went two months. Without even touching it? Yeah. You're a machine. What about your think, head? Though? Did you keep your head tight or you just let it all go? No, I, I remember um, I went through a breakup one time. Mm-hmm. And I just like did the old like, fuck the world, not take care of from here up just to keep everyone away from me. <laughs> Put everything from there down, got its usual attention. Oh, yeah, trim. the balls were trimmed. I was fine. You know, I was in shape, sticking to my diet. But from here up, I was like, oh, Ron's going through a crisis. You know, it sounded like my cry <laughs> to the world. announcement made. <laughs> He's definitely not dateable. Yeah, that's, that's flawless. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Um, here's one. Is uh, 500 milligrams a test twice a week, so a gram a test, is that too much? My coach said to start this cycle, but it seems like a lot. So we're assuming the guy isn't like advanced. advanced, Maybe he hasn't done a lot of drugs. So this is like a shock to his system type of a cycle. Yeah. So what would you say about that? Yes. Too much. Yes. Quick, easy, done. There's no reason for like, I think that's the thing. Number one, if, and I love that this guy asked that because that alone is your answer. If you think it's too much, it is too much because that tells me that you're taking half of that or even less than that. And there's no reason because I can promise you And here. I'll be really, really blunt because everyone thinks that we shy away from drugs. If the key to being better was just more drugs, I would buy more drugs. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I don't have a shortage of, of finances to buy $65 bottles of drugs, nor is it hard to take it. It requires no talent. That's not right. the answer on how you need to get better. Um, plus, uh, and this is something Dante drove into my head over and over again, is drugs hide mistakes. Yeah. So whether you're dieting, which I think he said he was in contest prep, um, or you're trying to grow, you might think you're doing better than you are because the drugs are doing their job. Right. You know, so the answer is yes, it's way too much. And yes. just for the record, a gram uh, of test is the highest that I ever go. Right. Ever. Yeah, I was like, last, you know, <laughs> the last time I was using a thousand megs a week of test, I was like three, 315 or 320. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, I'm here. I'll tell you this. I'm at 300 right now and I'm not doing that. Oh, did you hit three? Yeah. Because you were like yeah. 297 last week. Yeah. I, I actually, yesterday. Which it's been a good weekend of eating. Todd's here, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw that. I, I actually, that actually crossed my mind. Yeah, so, so. No, but, but yeah, so I mean, Graham is, I think what's scary is in our industry, it's gotten, like, that's like a starting point for guys now. Yeah. You know, I'm like, a gram? Jesus. 
I just get tired of taking shots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, here's one. Um, oh, I lost it here. Let, let's, let's, let's have an attempt at this. Define working set in a sentence. A sentence is a bunch of words together in one group that have, yeah. Never well, mind. the problem I'll is take... on, on the internet, a sentence can be like 45 paragraphs long. Right. With no <laughs> commas, no nothing. No <laughs> capital letters. Yeah. You know, sometimes when I get a, like if somebody sends me a, a question or something like that, I try to read it the way they wrote it. Right. With, with no punctuation. Very difficult. Uh, okay. Working set is, man. Ron, take a shot. I, mean, I want to hear yours. I can cheat. I, I, I would say it's a, um, a high effort set that you're putting maximum effort into and at least achieving momentary concentric failure. See, and I'm really glad I did not try to say that because that's flawless and that's not what I would say. <laughs> and then there's the, a, a caveat would be that a working set doesn't necessarily need to be too uh, concentric failure if you're like you could do like five sets of five and all five sets are pretty tough but the last one's to failure um those could all be considered working sets because you know they're significant poundages that add up and create a total overload but for the most part a working set for most people's purpose is like you have to you know, kind of hit concentric failure or your form starts to break and you have to terminate the set. Yeah, I think that I think the reason it's tough for me to answer is right there. It's funny. I actually I got caught on one of my own routines by this question because um, I said three sets of 10. It's an it's a beginner program. And she sent back. She's like, so are all three of those to failure? And I was like, ooh. Shit. <laughs> Because that's not how I would train, you know, like right. to me, the, a true working set is to failure. Um, but that's where you're going to have uh, and like where the number of total working sets you have or, or even per exercise is determine what you what you've already done. You know, so um, you're looking to me, a true working set is to failure or right to that cusp, not necessarily past it. You know what I mean? Um, right. But yeah, I would say it has to be to failure or to me, it's a touch, you know, right. but right. how you do those touches, like for example, on leg press, I find a leg press to be a dangerous movement if you do them deep because of your hip flexor. Um, it's not really a natural position for your body. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, so my touches to my working set are 20 reps. I'm intentionally getting tired before the working set. So when people see me do 11 plates aside and die for 20 reps, they're probably like, oh, I do that. But they don't realize that I did that with four, six, eight, and 10 plates first. Right, so you do accumulate some kind of volume um, exhaust or volume work as yeah. you approach the fit. Yeah, yeah the, the last, what I would call warm up or pre-exhaust set is very hard. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll yeah. only go up one or two more plates for the working set. And then that one is we're shooting for 20, but it might be 19. It might be 23. Right. Right. You know? Right. Okay. Um, I had a good one here. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Oh yeah. So I might change the wording of the question. So the question is um, best calves to thighs in bodybuilding. Not just size, but harmony, balance, conditioning. So I think what they mean is, you know, sometimes we say who's got the best legs, but he's like, no, no, include the calves, like the full leg, foot to hip. Who's got the best legs? And I don't know, it's hard to say. So do you want to just say at, at the Olympia, who had the best legs at the Olympia? Okay, this year? Yeah. Glutes, quads, hams, calves, balance, harmony, conditioning, all together, best set of legs on stage. Akeem Williams. That I was going to say either Akeem or Hadi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, a good point. Uh, I think, though, uh, for me, the reason is I think Akeem's shape is flawless. Like the way it sweeps out. Like Hadi, when I look at his legs from the front, I go quads. You right. know what I'm saying? Like they jump at me. So when I'm thinking of harmony and balance, uh, which is so funny because Akeem's the, 
one of the biggest freaks on the planet, but hey. it's also pretty. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Akeem would be uh, who I would say, and overall, and he wasn't at the Olympia, but should have been, is Flex Lewis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's the, that's the answer, I guess, with the year off. You know, he wasn't really in the thought of the equation there, but that's always been the case. Yeah. <clears throat> nothing could be nothing could be better. Nothing needs to be bigger. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Everything is just perfectly crazy. Yep. You know. So okay, that's a good one actually. Um. I think we talked about this before, but you got a home gym, and you only have room for one. Do you buy a hack or a leg press? Already has a rack and a bunch of bars, so he's already got a squat rack. <sighs> okay, <laughs> I this is funny for me. It would be a hack squat. Okay, and the reason and the reason is um, I don't unless he had a Smith machine. I don't stimulate my quads really really well on a squat, but. For 90% of my clients, it would be a leg press because they can get what they're getting out of a hack in a squat and you can't really reproduce a leg press. And I think a leg press is a great volume movement. Also, a leg press is more versatile. For you sure. can do calves on it. Single leg. And you can do single <laughs> leg presses on it. And you can do like, I think high-footed presses are more hammy and gluty yep. than high-footed hacks are. Yep, for sure. I, 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 Down low, yeah. I mean, a hack squat is a one-trick pony, in my opinion. See, e even if I put my feet up high on a hack, I still feel like my quads do more most of the work. Yeah, it just changes everything. I think you can now you can get into hips and everything else. No, I agree 100. percent A leg press is way more versatile. A hack is a hack. Like I right. just had this conversation with one of the guys this weekend. He goes, "Where should I put my feet?" I'm like, "Where you're strong." Right. Where you're strong and comfortable is my first. That's where I start with everyone. Yeah. Is, and where, unless where do your knees like, feel, yeah, unless they're way out there. But if yeah. if they're semi correct, I'm like, yeah. And your body kind of tells you where to go because you ever notice somebody they put their feet like say they put them perfectly parallel to each other, and on the first rep they go down and their toes just go out. Yeah, they just slide on their own like the shoes yeah. just go. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like that's where they go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. So, but yeah, the answer to the question is definitely leg press for 99% of people. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Um. I don't know. Did we talk about this? What was the worst first date you ever had? We did not talk about this. Worst first date. Oh, see, and I hate this because I have I have zero good story. And the reason is I have. Mm. What is that? My phone's ringing. Was it me? Um, I, I've never had a bad first date because I've never dated someone I didn't know. Like didn't get to know right. on some level where I already knew that it would be fine, you know. Um, I did. I could tell you a great, a great first date story though that happened to a friend of mine. Um, she had this guy at the gym who kept hitting her up, kept hitting her up, and uh, she finally was like, you know what? Yeah, let's let's go to dinner. So he says, okay, let's let's go to Mastros, and Mastros is a high end steakhouse here. And she was like, all right. Kind of extreme for a first date, but, you know, maybe he's got money. So she says the whole dinner was a little bit choppy and awkward. Um, but it got really bad when the check came and he took it in his hand. And he opened it up and he looked at it and he closed and slid it across the table and said, I don't have that much. <laughs> <laughs> and he proceeded to ask if they could split it. And she said, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and get this one. Oh, man. Paid it, took her loss, and I got the call on her way home. And I said, you know what? I bet you that guy does it all the time. He's a fucking genius. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe he already decided he wasn't into her. Yeah, maybe he was like, this is terrible. I'm not paying this $300. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, literally, I'm like, I, I, I was like, wait, so he actually physically slid it to you? And she's like, yep. Oh, damn. <laughs> it's like. It's not like you didn't know. It's not like you went to McDonald's and all of a sudden the hamburger was just fifty-five dollars. Like you chose the restaurant. <laughs> like you knew what you were getting into when you 
when you pulled this trigger. It's uh, that's why I think it, I think it was on purpose. Or like you said, right. maybe he was like, she sucks. I'm not paying 300 bucks to, for this. Or maybe he realized it wasn't getting laid. He's like, this isn't going anywhere. She don't like me. Right. That's funny. <laughs> I uh, I had a buddy. I I I, I think I already told the story about the girl I went on that date with, and she was in like law school. Yes, and, you did. The, the and she just started pounding gins, and I was like, "Holy shit, <laughs> that, was, that was funny." <laughs> My buddy went on a date with a girl, and they started, and they were having a great time. And uh, I guess she got really comfortable. She had a few drinks, so they started talking about like, "Oh, it's a you know, it's the craziest thing you ever did." And they were like really heavily flirting, so they started kind of talking like about sex. Right. And then uh, and she just like tells him this story. <laughs> He was like traumatized. She's just talking and she's like, yeah, I fucked three guys at once this one time. You know, we were just really drunk. They were kind of buddies of mine. And he's like, you got gangbanged. <laughs> she's like, she's like, oh, is that what you call it? And he's oh, like, good. yeah, yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, they ran a train on you. They sure did. <laughs> so he said it was just like. <laughs> he, said, he said it just like. <laughs> Check, please. Check. But the funny thing was, she's like, oh, is that what they call it? And he's like, yeah, the, most people who've done one know what it's called. <laughs> How did you get into this position and didn't know what that was called? <laughs> you know what I mean? That just uh, that story always cracked me up. <laughs> uh, just just imagine mad. he's like, I don't want this date to go where I thought I did. 10 yeah, minutes ago. And, and then she's like kind of innocent about it. Like, oh, is that what it's called? <laughs> is it is, is that unusual? <laughs> Does it matter what it's called, to be quite honest? <laughs> Is, is the name the thing that's throwing you off the most about this? Right, right, right. The name concerns you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, let's see. i got to find another one now. Uh, I, could, uh, I could, while you're hunting, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a different story, the same story. So oh. when I played hockey, we used to go to Canada to play all the time. Right. And I was in my room asleep. <laughs> and uh, one of my buddies comes to my room. He's like, hey, you got 80 bucks? I was like, sure. It's in my wallet, in my pants. So he leaves. I go to sleep. The next day, we go to Canada's Wonderland. You know what that is? Like the amusement oh, yeah. park? Yeah. So we go to the amusement park, and we're waiting in line. I was like, hey, how was the stripper? He goes, it wasn't a stripper. I'm like, you got a hooker? He's like, yeah. I said, you lost your virginity to a hooker. He's like, yeah. I said, well, how did this work out? So apparently, this lady For goes eight out. bucks. Well, I don't know what the total was, but he needed eight. <laughs> <laughs> so this lady comes okay, in. Okay. Oh, this gets, okay. It gets worse, dude. It gets worse. So she comes in, and you got five, like, 16-year-old, 17-year-old hockey players in a room. And she oh, comes in, and wow. she's like. Hey, and the four of them go to get up, and she goes, "Oh, you don't have to leave." And they're like, <laughs> so "Okay, I'm here to make money." So, no, so she takes care of him, goes in the bathroom, cleans up, comes out. Who's next? And as any good hockey player is, our goalie goes, "Me." <laughs> <laughs> Of course, it's the goalie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the the, uh, the most brain dead of the team goes for round two, and yep, that's what they did on that uh, glorious oh, Saturday night. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. So, parents, yes. when your kids are out just playing sports, remember it's just fine. They're just getting hookers. Now, was the hooker <laughs> taking American money, or was this already changed into Canadian funds? <laughs> That's a valid question. I don't actually remember the answer to that. You know, <laughs> but I just thought it was the weirdest thing because I'm like, oh, they got a stripper, or whatever. <laughs> oh no, you lost. You both lost your virginity to a hooker, and one of you got the sloppy seconds. Awesome. Oh god. And that's the shit they do in Canada. That's why we're safe down here in the U.S. where weird things don't happen. That's the shit <laughs> hockey players do, Dusty. Mm-hmm. Hockey players are like, they're mm -hmm. always been the worst. Oh, that's a fact. That's no, even the worst, the, the best. I mean, yes, worse. So fo football players are bad, but not when I was our football team behaved really well because like we didn't start playing ball till grade 10. Yeah. But at hockey, you've started so young. So you've been Five. like, yeah. So you're like so in the hockey world and it's just 
you just change it. By the time you're 15, you're just banging hookers and yeah, we had, had puck <laughs> had puck bunnies. That's what they called them. It's the girls who just hung out the ring. <laughs> Yeah, it's real life. Oh man. Sorry, mom. Oh, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um <laughs> hey, let's talk uh let's talk um television. Yes. What are you watching? Yellowstone. Okay, so you I told started me, it. You, you we had a little we had a little joke about Kevin Costner with a cowboy hat. Yes. How we needed to see this again. And where are you now? I am I'm on I'm like six episodes in to the first season. Um, and here's the deal. It is country sons of anarchy. That's uh, what I'm watching. Sons of anarchy rancher style. Exactly. And you, you're going to, uh, anybody who starts watching this after this episode, they're going to watch the first episode. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. Just wait. Yeah. I think yeah, around, yeah. I think around episode three or so things get a little more clear and you're so, like, Oh fuck. Do you want to know the moment when sons of anarchy was like, I was like, Oh Okay, this show's going someplace. Do you what want to know that? the moment? Uh, it was like episode two or three. Right. And it was where Gemma goes to the hospital and gives that girl that book with the fucking loaded heroin syringe in it. <laughs> yeah. She goes, why don't you just do us all a favor and finish yourself off or whatever the fuck she said to her. <laughs> yeah, and gave a junkie gave a, a loaded junkie heroin. In the hospital. A for an overdose. Syringe, <laughs> for an overdose. A loaded syringe. He goes, you didn't quite do a good enough job, you cunt, or whatever she says to her. I can't remember that. And she just leaves it. So there's a junkie in the hospital left with a loaded syringe. And you're just like, oh, God, okay. <laughs> Woo, we it's going to be a long night tonight. <laughs> yeah, we got some bad people on this show doing bad, mean things. This is going to get crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that I... Um that I'm not in that place of my life anymore because when I watched Sons of Anarchy, so I started watching Sons at the beginning of the last season. Okay. So there were six seasons. You started I started, one, started, I started six, yeah. yeah. I watched the last episode live. Right. Yeah. You caught <laughs> I, I caught up. <laughs> right. And, I, and thankfully yeah. I'm, I'm not a binger like that. Like I can literally watch an episode and, and call it a day. Um, but it's not because it's not, I mean, it's awesome. But, uh, you know, my, my time is a little more expensive now. So right. I actually don't even watch an episode every day, which is why I'm not that far. But it's awesome. And the and, uh, I think a key is, I mean, everyone knows this, but casting is everything. They have yeah. the right cast. You know what I mean? Like, and every great show, if you start thinking about it, you're like, like, you, you can't not have Gemma or the show doesn't yeah. exist. You know yeah. what I mean? And and the, the, casting is more than just finding the actor for the part. It's finding an actor that makes you interested in that character. Like they cast Gemma, and to me, they cast Peggy. Bundy. Peggy. Yep. Peg Bundy. Yep. Is a biker mama. And I'm like, I gotta fucking see this. Right. <laughs> so all I heard for like the first while was like. You know, um, Katie Seagal steals the fucking show. Right. Katie Seagal dominates Sons of Anarchy. Katie Seagal, most interesting character on the show, best written character, best cast character. I'm like, I got to fucking watch this show. Yeah. So like they, they, they do that and when they do a good job and they nail it and that person is is able to completely transform your view of that actor. Yep. You know, it's like that, that, that's crazy. Sort of like, I mean, I'd seen him in a few dark things before because mm -hmm. he'd done a few dark things just to like throw people off. But Jason Bateman in Ozarks. Yep. For sure. You know, he's a comedic actor. You know, he did do that, mo that movie called The Gift. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I did. Yep. That was, that was good. And he was dark in that. But, um, you know, they, they throw Bateman in this, in this, and you're like, oh, this is, this is the guy from fucking, yeah. you know, horrible bosses. Yeah, and when they but when they when they nail it though, the rest of development and they you know steal it. Like I, I feel the same way. Uh, uh, Tom Hardy in um in what the fuck? I just blanked my name. Um, my show. Jesus, are you serious? Yellowstone. No, no. What are you talking about? Tom Hardy was is in my uh, regular show. It's doing episode seven this year or six season. Jesus Christ, Shelby, Tommy Shelby, work with me. Peaky, 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 yeah. There you go. I didn't he know was, Tom. Hardy. Oh yeah, Tom Hardy comes into that show, doesn't he? 
and he's the best actor and the best character I've ever seen in any show ever. Wow. Okay. Ever. Like, I didn't read. Like, I've always known he was good. He might be one of the greatest actors ever. <laughs> did you see? Did you see the movie that Tom Hardy did? Fuck, I can't remember the name, but he played both of the Cray twins. Legends. Legends. Legend. Yeah, legend. Yeah. Awesome. Legend. Oh, Jesus. Yep. What a fucking... I had no idea what that movie was about when I watched it on the plane, and I had no idea Tom Hardy played both twins. Right. I, I just turned it on like, oh, I heard this was good, and I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were flying overseas, and it was one of the choices. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So he's... Yeah, he's fantastic. Um, so I started watching a show that was suggested by a viewer. Which was? And it was exactly what we wanted. We wanted something that was... Fast pace, right? Because we just kind of watched a slow-moving documentary series for like eight hours. Right. So we kind of wanted like a fun show that was gonna that was gonna like move quickly. There you go. Dusty's talking. Dusty's talking to his dogs or his crew. He's got questions to answer. I was. Uh, I was. Don, Donna needs to get out the door. So I, I asked Todd if he could open the door for. Her. Oh yeah, yeah. She's yeah. standing there. She's like, I got a piss, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so we we wanted a fast paced show that gave you kind of uh you know how some shows don't give you any reward for like eight episodes and you're just like fuck i need a reward right <laughs> this this show's kind of fast paced so there's like you know every episode something big is happening so it's fun to watch it moves pretty quick they did a good job with the cast and it's actually filmed in vancouver so we're like recognizing all the scenery and shit it's kind of right. funny but it's um it were recommended by actually two of our viewers and it's called travelers Okay. I'm and it's a it's a Netflix show, and um, it's a kind of about time travelers. Right. Um, kind of about time cops. So people come back from the future, and they have to like steal a body. So they have to overwrite someone's consciousness. Oh. So you know, they just kind of take the person's body. So the the protocol is is they choose people that were going to die anyways because they don't want to fuck up the timeline. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So they'll have someone who's about to die and they'll jump into their body from the future and then like, you know, Utilize. Av avoid the death. Right. And now at least they haven't killed another person. They took someone who was going to die anyways. And, and and so they're trying to not disrupt the timeline too much because they, they have other things they have to do. Right. And they're trying to save the world in the future. Essentially, the world becomes a terrible dystopian place and they haven't really told us how bad it is. But well, we're uh, living it, it right now, so it's yeah, fine. yeah. We're just we're already started, right? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we're ahead so, of the show, but go ahead. <laughs> so it's kind of cool, and you know they cast, and it's kind of fun. They got you know every team, and there's a whole bunch of traveler teams all around the world, and sometimes they run into each other, right? And there's like every team has a medic and a scientist and a hacker, and you know a leader and you know some a security specialist, right? So it's like these so they they operate on little missions to try to change the future for the better. But then sometimes they fuck up, you know, and then <laughs> so it's 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 interesting. And then they, they throw in this little like you know, I like it when they throw in little things like this, like uh, one of the travelers takes the body of this woman mm -hmm. and they think the woman is a librarian. Right. Turns out the woman's actually mentally handicapped. She was born congenitally with a brain defect. Right. So the traveler is having a very hard time in that body and she's going to die because the consciousness can't really work well on the brain that is in the in the body. Right. So they're having all these emergency problems with this traveler and they realize that they pick that person because the AI that's doing it in the future is using their social media. And that person had a fake social media that they created for themselves. Ah. <laughs> So it threw That's off the a little plan. close to home. <laughs> right, right. That's exactly it. A little like slide that in. <laughs> so the, because this girl who was essentially like a four-year-old in her right. brain had created this librarian persona on her social media, um, they, the, the AI made a mistake and used her. So <laughs> – you know, that's right. I'm having so many real life things in my head right now. I'm just going to not say right. them. But. And, then, and then the hacker, the hacker, he, he, he comes to in this body and he realizes he's in the body of a junkie. Okay. So he's like fighting heroin withdrawals and he's using heroin and he's trying to dose and he's trying to like 
keep his dose stable so he can operate and keep his body functional. He's a function, yeah. So he's like a functional heroin addict for like the whole first season and a half so far. Because he has to be, because that's the yeah. body he's got. <laughs> and that's because the heroin addiction wasn't on that guy's social media. They didn't know. That's fucking awesome. That, that, so the, the thought process of the back of this show is it already has me because that's half the people you watch. Right. So it just it, I, I like when they throw that stuff in. You're like, oh, I see what they did there. <laughs> little you know? jab at all of us. Yeah, yeah, a little jab. <laughs> what would the future think I was? Yeah, which is actually funny because if you're in that i'm helping the guys on uh condemned that's something we're talking about is that they need to make sure that people who are following them know them right actually who they are (laughs) so we would be good bodies is my point right i just it's it's good travelers it's one of my favorite concepts and they they constantly reintroduce it subtly because there's new travelers arriving all the time right to give them news. like sometimes they're in the middle of something but they've kind of fucked it up you know what i mean yep so maybe they kind of fucked something up but they're still trying to and then another traveler will just show up and go traveler 3487 abort your mission you're off mission right and they're like oh fuck we got to stop what we're doing because it's not it didn't work Right. It's not leading to where they needed to go. Yeah. So and but so there's new travelers arriving all the time and there's always something kind of wrong. <laughs> how many how, how deep are you in this? Uh, we're a season and a half now. It's th- one of the reasons we picked it is because um, it's only three seasons and we know it's over with. Right. So they did. Sh- I guess Showtime did two seasons and then canceled it. And then Netflix got so many angry people because they loved the show that Netflix bought it and finished a proper third season. That's awesome. <laughs> they've done that with a handful of things, right? There's a bunch of shows they did that for. Um, right. You know, when, when the real fans and you know how the networks and stuff, they don't fucking know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and then the real fans are like, no, fucking you can't fucking cancel that. Netflix has done that with a bunch of shows. We're like, hey, hey, right. no worries. We're going to buy it, finish it properly, you know. That's kind of so, like what what I even though I think it's the same channel, what's happening with Dexter? Mm, you know they're they're coming out with another season now, and I think time, right? what's that? Yeah, I don't know what season it was, but I feel like it's the same thing because I remember when it ended. I was like, I literally was like, this doesn't have to be over. No, and and it's actually fine. Like, when did it end? Two thousand eleven. Yeah, it was yeah, it was a bit ago. So Dexter's been up in Canada working at a logging camp. Out of the yeah. way, off the map, off the grid. No, you know, let's see what's going on. Let's see what yeah. he's been doing. That was, It's funny because, you, know? you know, you said uh, when you said that shows will drag on and not give any reward. That's what I loved about that show was there was the issue with the episode, every single episode that tied in with the full season issue right. that had to be solved by the end of the year. Right. You know what I mean? I always felt like they did good with that because, like you said, they would tie off this issue today but we still have the one that's 12 episodes long you know what i mean they did i thought whoever wrote that show was a genius yeah yeah it was awesome St- to this day i still think that season four of dexter uh-huh which, which one was that that was the season that had the family theme where um they bring in um it's the actor's name to play the other killer Oh, um, yes. Um, yes. The dad from Third Rock. Yep. Yes. Third, that Third was Rock phenomenal. from the phenomenal. What's what's that actor's name? I can't believe I can't remember it. John. Oh, fuck. Wait, now that you said that, I almost have it. He yelled <laughs> the dogs. Um, God, I know what you're talking about, but yeah, that that was a crazy season. Oh, no, no uh, John Lithgow. Yeah, that's right. Lithgow. John mm-hmm. Lithgow. There you go. Crushes the show. And then how that show ended, how that season ended, that was just like, oh, man. That was the peak of the show for me. Yeah, yeah. But when I'm done, I'm going to go back to Peaky Blinders because I only watched uh, two episodes. And it was like, yeah, see, oh, fuck, it's been good. Yeah, I think I, it's the only show I've seen where I do tell people, if you're unsure, give it three episodes. Because that show also, every season gets better all the way to season five. Season one is shit compared to season five. Right, right. For sure. Right. For like, it just kept getting better and better and better. In yeah. My opinion. Yeah. And then writers start realizing how far they can push the violence and the 
horribleness and the oh god it's all fantastic. that stuff you know, I, the, we will exchange clips sometimes like my training partners will will just send me a random clip from peaky and you're like oh, i remember that <laughs> i remember that yeah just yeah there's there's a million that you'll be like oh that's really fucked up <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what's your what's your view on this year, Dusty? Um, do you think we're going to have – when do you think the bodybuilding shows will actually start? I happening? think uh, – I think – well, I mean, I'm talking – They're going to move every single level? floor, every single gonna, show to Florida. That's exactly what I hope they do. Right. Literally. I Because um, I got guys – I've got multiple people getting ready for Junior USAs, Junior Nationals, USAs, North Americans, and I wish – that the promoters would just say it now and we could be done with it. Right. Um, and I know what they're doing, obviously with the presidential shit down here, they're kind of trying to see it out, see it through, but because of, okay. So if we didn't have 2020, that would be a big, Oh, why are they doing that? Everybody just wants to know that their show is going to happen. Right. They want to know they're going to go and I don't want to sit in a fucking mask and watch your show. Like I don't wear masks anywhere anymore. I've just stopped. Um, and, uh, it's that's kind of the vibe. Like, I think people want to be able to go do it normal. Or you think they'll have like every single state show in Florida, like Missouri state in Florida. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I mean, I totally know what you mean. I think now they won't because at least most of the states minus the two stupid ones of New York and uh, California, um, we're kind of open. But then the other thing that sucks is these promoters can't make as much money right. because of all the stipulations and the rules. So, I hope that it all starts to change because at some point people have to realize it doesn't make sense. Right. Because, you know, Todd's going to get on a completely full airplane tonight after standing six feet away from someone waiting in line to get on that plane. Yeah, I know. (laughs) You know, know, so every single seat's going to be full once you're in it in the capsule that I like to call a Petri dish. Um, (laughs) You know, so it's, it doesn't make sense, but no, I, I really do. I hope that all the big shows just say, fuck it, let's make it Florida, and we're good. And and that's not convenient for me at all. So it's not like I'm saying, that like, oh, well, I live in Miami, so why not? It's fucking far, and I have to go to every single one, but I want to know what's going to happen. You know, right. I got I got too many, especially after last year. I got guys that needed to be on stage last year, and I was like, I don't think we do it. You know? Yeah. And we all had yeah, great yeah. off season, but now, like... Like guys like Cole and Tommy are fucking dying to get on stage. They haven't competed yeah. in two years. <laughs> yeah. I got a I got a couple people that purposely took like nineteen twenty to grow. Yeah. They're like, holy fuck, what a bullet I dodged. You know, <laughs> yeah. there why well, a few that took nineteen to grow because twenty was the year. Right. There's a few, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, so, that looks like you're taking two years to grow, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, is that it, Dusty? We almost went two hours. We did, and you, uh, you you killed it with a million questions, man. Good work. I, I and then I got to do the rest on my story, you know, because yeah. I got I got asked like I got asked a Star Wars question. I'm not going to burden it. you with that, Dusty. I, I, I it's just I have such an opinion of it, you know. I, I got I I got I'm asked comfortable. I got asked to rate in order three Beastie Boy albums. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait to answer these fucking questions, Dusty. But you're going to have to watch my Instagram <laughs> for it. See, and I, I will because I am actually. That's like when you asked the what was it the the ACDC question that you answered and you were like I hope it didn't go too long I was like fuck no I was like just sitting there taking it in I had no idea about any of this shit it was like the greatest moment for me <laughs> I I watch I watch most of your questions I'll skip the odd one if it's well, because like, you know most of a lot of them you're gonna know exactly anyway yeah so like sometimes it's like how much should I eat I'm like oh, I'm gonna skip this one. Yeah. But then there'll be like a question, you know, I'm like, oh, I want to hear what Dusty has to say to this guy, because this is clearly a great question or this is clearly a stupid question. So Dusty's going to have to take care of business on this one. <laughs> one way or the other. This might. Be yeah, good. this It'd might be, be a sarcastic answer. We'll see if Dusty laughs at this one or gives a serious answer. <laughs> so, no, no, it's good. But uh, yeah, man, it's it's going to be uh, it's, you know, it's going to be good. Oh, and we got some guests coming up. Um, we got a, a few people waiting in the wings. But we just got to book them. We just got to give them some Mondays. Yep. So let's start lining those guys up. Yep. Get them on. I know Zane Watson wants to come on the show. I'd love to have him on. Love to have Zane on. So I already talked to him. He's whenever we want to do it. So we just got to give him some notice. Um, so that would be great. Zane's one of the guys I missed this year. Right. He was, I mean, he was in Ontario. 
Right. So, I mean, it's like Jim's, uh, he's got his own gym, obviously, but it's, you know, lockdown city for like most of the year. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I see why he just hunkered down in his own gym just pulled up the hoodie and just fucking went to work. It might be, I think it's might, nuts. Well, it might be Zane Watson surprise time 2021, right? It's 2.0 now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think a lot of guys, it's going to be cool to see because they did take that approach. Yeah. Some so of the guys are excited to see. I'm, I'm, like, yeah, oh. exactly. You know, who knows what? We might have some surprises in 2021 because there's some guys that were like, okay, I'm just going to sit in my basement for the year and eat. I think, I think Hollings had kind of opened that up too because. Not that we all knew that James was good, but I think he kind of gave everyone the realization like, but what if you went all in? Mm-hmm. Because he went all in. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, a year ago, I wouldn't have been like, oh, he's definitely going to win both shows he does next year. Right. I'd have been like, yeah, he's top five for sure. First call up. Yeah. You know, but it would not have been what well, he's going to win, you know. Right. So you know, I think I think that's a game changer. You know who else I'd really like to get back on because I just can't get enough is uh, is JP. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I want to get him back in because every single time, the only thing is, is we're gonna have to do the show a little earlier because I have to go to the gym after we talk. I have to. <laughs> Same here. It's can't impossible to, to not go day. train immediately after day. that conversation. <laughs> you know what? This next time, what we'll do is um, send him a message. Uh, give him a little heads up this time. So he combs his hair and, uh, and we'll get him on, get him on the air. Actually don't. I want the crazy scientist look. Yes, I want to look I, like I want he's straight from the gym. Lately he's been doing him in the dark. That's I want him right off the hack squat. <laughs> Still Flip flops it. and all. <laughs> Fucking love it. Okay. Thanks Dusty. Appreciate it. Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell. Scott can, Take that, put it at the front of the show where I was supposed to say it, and then leave it where it is. So I say it twice, put the graphic over both. There. Problem solved. Flawless. Look at that. Yeah, just helping him out. You're helping his skills on oh. editing. Okay, thanks, everybody. And remember, it's just bodybuilding.